Okay, so... <clears throat> let's talk about... TPKs, getting it over your head, and what to do about it. Um, so, in my uh, Red Hand of Doom remix uh, campaign, which is Red Hand of Doom, but I changed a bunch of stuff around, and I, you know, I'm giving it another shot at running it. Um, we have a very good group. Like, mechanically, the characters are all really well built. They had access to all sorts of homebrew content to make themselves very, very strong. And they're also very smart uh, tactical players. So their confidence levels are high. And uh, thus far, their track record for battles um, has been really, really good. So it kind of still surprised me when uh, the party was backtracking some bandits and they received word from uh, animals in the forest. I'm I'm a sucker for talking animals in the forest. I know there's a lot of DMs out there that are like, eh, what's a squirrel really know? Eh, that's not fucking fun. That's not fun. Stop being, stop being a jerk. There's other better ways to be a jerk. Let the squirrel know some stuff so that the players can ask the squirrel questions that it's cute. And they ask the squirrel questions anyways. The squirrel told them, basically, after some bribes and coercion, where the bandits were located, and that there were essentially two different ways um, that the bandits liked to go. The big purple bandits, a.k.a. the Fomorian giants, holy shit, aren't, aren't your players only level four? That's right. Um, and then there was the main entrance, which was a guarded by something big. So, hear me out. Giants are also big. So I was a little surprised when the party was like, oh, shit, something big is guarding the main entrance. Oof, something big is guarding the main entrance. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know about this one. Um, let's go with the giants. So I was a little confused. I was like, OK, so I had decided that this giant uh, guarded entrance would have three uh, giants. Uh, there are these lovely caves the giants use as little sleepy cubby holes. There we go. You see them? And there are, uh, there's entrance here. So you got one sleepy cubby hole, two sleepy cubby hole, three sleepy cubby hole, and then four sleepy cubby hole. All together, they have four Fomorian giants working for them. That's kind of a lot. That's kind of crazy for a fourth level adventure. It is. It is. Um, they also have two ogres, an owlbear, a bunch of bandits um, that have furbolg abilities. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, smaller cave here leads into the facility, uh, a.k.a. the back door. Kind of goes in here and then pops you up right here and it goes that way. Um, there's also this little river area that there's a river in the boss chamber that drains out behind this waterfall. And like there's a little waterfall that joins this big waterfall. So the benefit here is if you go in this entrance, you are entering the back door. You're going right to the final boss fight. So if you can get past the um, the guards, you're golden. Well, when they came up onto the scene, uh, there was a guard here and there were two other Fomorians that were sleeping. And rather than just try to sneak past them, they tried to bamboozle their way past them, which there's a bard in the party, and that's a pretty common play for bards. You try to bamboozle. The problem is the bard doesn't speak giant, um, and the giant didn't speak common, and they just didn't have any language in common, and they didn't know that until he started talking to them. So they have this situation um, where he's talking to the... Uh, you know, he's talking to the Fomorian, which is, you know, this little dude who's up on a hill here. And um, the bard was over here. And they were, like, talking it out. You can kind of see from all the, the dead people and the gore and stuff. It didn't go too well. And he comes up. And they're trying to convince him. And they're trying to get the drop on this dude without alerting the other giants. But this is a giant. So it's got a giant amount of hit points. Um, this giant, for example, is armored. He's got an 18 armor class. He's got 133 hit points. They're level four. 
You're not going to be able to sleep spell this guy. You're not going to be able to burn down his health. You're not going to be able to dramatically clock him over the head and knock him unconscious unless you had something really, really clever, like dropping an entire boulder on him uh, or, you know, making a tree fall on top of him or something like that. Even then, he's a giant, so he's probably going to bounce back from it. So it was a whole thing um, where they tried to bamboozle this giant, and in the end, they tried to fight the giant. Um, and then that caused the other two giants uh, to get alerted um, because this giant started yelling for help. Now, admittedly, they stripped this giant of his ability to blow the horn, to sound the horn for his allies, but he's still a giant, and there's two giants sleeping nearby. They weren't able to alert anyone inside the dungeon because he didn't blow the, um, the horn. Um, I also had it that he forgot his club, so he had to go back for his club. I was rolling checks to see if they could climb out and get to the heroes. They kept failing. There were so many things that were going right for the heroes that they could have just fled and then um, regrouped and approached differently. They could have tried to lure the giants away. There was a lot of things that they couldn't do or they could have done, but they were convinced that they had to stay and fight. I paused the combat at one point and said, currently, you have a chance to flee. You don't have to fight these guys. I point blank kind of threw it out there. And they still wanted to fight these guys. So they did. And um, it didn't go well. Uh, the other Fremorians climbed out uh, and joined the battle. Um, people got horribly mutated by the Fremorians' um, uh, evil eye debuff. And they started dropping like flies. Um, at that point, the party was like, you know what? We're going to go down fighting. But then they told one guy to flee. Here's the thing. We're playing D&D &D to play D&D &D and have a fun, cool story. I'm not in the habit of having like the TPKs and putting all the work into a campaign and having to start the whole campaign over, cancel the campaign before it really gets its feet underneath it. It's a bad feeling. Um, sometimes there's a TPK. It happens. Sometimes that's the end of the campaign. I didn't want the things to end right here. And fortunately for me, um, the bandits uh, are in the habit of taking prisoners. And this giant um, knows that. So he had the other giants do non-lethal damage or, you know, patch them up, whatever, and take them prisoner. Um, the other guy escaped. And then the next session we ran involved uh, them having to escape and him trying to sneak in and infiltrate. So in that regard, uh, because they were really good sports about, um, you know, losing terribly and then being taken prisoner, um, it falls on me, the DM, to be as indulgent and um, yes and as possible when they're trying to escape. It's bad enough to take them prisoner. It's, it's, it's insulting. It hurts their feelings. Like, nobody wants to be taken prisoner. Um, but now they're in that trope of let's escape and so it falls on us as the DM to say, cool, tell me how you plan to escape. And no matter how stupid or how convoluted or how silly the attempt is, you want to lean into it because this is a game and their morale is super duper low from being taken prisoner. And you're just trying to um, boost that morale back up by having some like cool prison break uh, situation, which a little bit of a spoiler is what happened in the next session. Um, so when you have, um, uh, a TPK, always ask yourself towards the end, would it have been possible? Or when you see that things aren't going well and you see that things are falling apart. Um, I was thinking of all these different ways that we could deuce ex machina or whatever it's, it is, um, act of God, uh, save them. So I thought we have, uh, they're in the Witchwood. We could have some elves show up and try to save them. And the elves could say, you know, this way, heroes, blah, blah, blah. And then that would be a good way to introduce the Kiri uh, Kator. And then, um, you know, the elves offer to provide a distraction so that the party could sneak in. That would have been pretty cool. I was kind of kind of leaning towards that. I thought that sounded cool. Um, I thought about doing something with the mushrooms here. That maybe these mushrooms, um, if they were agitated, um, could be like the... Fomorians just didn't know, but these mushrooms, when combined, when their spores are combined, um, could knock you out or something like that. Um, I thought about that, but then I worried that the party craftsman um, slash artificer slash big brain guy 
would then be like, cool, we're going to cultivate these and then we're going to make them into like sleep bombs and we're going to use them for the rest of the campaign. Um, the problem with innovative players is that they, you always have to plan around like their innovations and it, it makes it a lot harder to introduce like fun one-off things because they're always looking for ways to, I don't want to say exploit because a lot of them, it's not about exploiting. It's just about, um, it's just about being clever and coming up with outside the box way of doing things. Um, but it can feel exploitative if they're, you know, basically changing the game um, in a way that uh, suddenly everybody wants to do that certain thing, that certain way without doing anything else that they do. Um, so it's hard to add like kind of video gamey stuff like that without then having to worry like, oh, geez, OK, how much how much sleep gas are they going to make? How many? I mean, they've already poisoned the entire dungeon um, ahead of time. So, like, how much are we going to do? So, I'm looking at all these different ways to sort of say, like, mm, you guys are in over your head. This fight was meant to be uh, less of a fight and more of a puzzle to solve, more of a challenge to overcome, not so much a actual battle, because CR calculation, this is an impossible fight. Um, and so, you know, I, I said, hey, they got a nice little jail cell in there. Um... I feel like this would be a cool way to do it. So they will get taken prisoner if they fail this fight. And then mathematically, of course, they did. Um, they even tried to flee uh, at some point. So I had to keep adding more and more map. Uh, this is why it looks so janky is because I had to keep adding uh, maps that kind of matched up with the map I was using to sort of expand the map outwards and break down walls and stuff. Um, it was certainly a challenge to run. Uh, there was a lot of stuff to keep track of. Uh and I think at one point I may have botched the hit points uh, calculations because uh, the ranger kept adding more and more and more bonuses on and I kept uh, having to go back and add the bonuses. So I think at a certain point, a giant may have died, may not have died. I don't know. In the end, they killed one giant. There were two left and one of them was almost at full health. So mathematically, I think they still would have failed the fight, but it is what it is at this point. We moved on past the fight. They're in the uh, they're in the dungeon now, um, you know, trying to escape um, and living out that sort of fantasy trope of you've been taken prisoner, but now you escape and you find your gear and you fight your way to freedom. Um, so the takeaway here is if you are um, finding that you've dug a, a hole for yourself or that your players have dug a hole for themselves or you decided to roll a random encounter and it's a deadly random encounter or anything else that might have happened, always, always, always look for that opportunity. Look for that out to turn a TPK into another um, adventure, right? Fail into success is what I'm basically saying is the big takeaway here. All right. So, yeah, the video for this session, um, I forgot to record it with sound, so I don't. I have to go in and add that. So right now it doesn't, but if it does, uh, it'll be available for my Patreon uh, supporters in the uh, secret drive full of game recordings for them to check out. But I recorded this to kind of just throw my thoughts out there on the session and sort of explain um, where I was coming from with my thoughts and decisions on this, why I would even make an encounter this impossible. And um, just a reminder that you are the game engine for the game. You can adapt and change. Um, and if your players are uh, giving you yes and energy, you need to be giving your players yes and energy so that you can tell a cool story together. All right. Um, yeah, for more stuff like this, of seeing like behind the scenes into the games that I run and um, watching me you know, uh, expand a map on the fly in Foundry, and uh, all that you can check out my prep streams on twitch and you can check out my actual play gm footage on patreon um all right thanks for hanging out i'll see you next time